So Michael Chiardi and Mark McInnes or uh, Campbell, Campbell McInnes? Campbell, Campbell McInnes, yes. Yeah. Good to meet you, Eric. Mark. Yeah, it's good to meet you too. Um, shoot, what can I say about this movie? I love this movie. I love this movie so much. Um, oh, that's great. Uh, People always uh, often melodrama usually has a bad connotation to it, but I, I'm a fan of uh, Sidney Lament who talks about melodrama in the best possible sense. And I think this movie has that in spades. This is like a really good kind of, kind of, you know where the movie's going, but you still root for it. And, and uh, yeah, this, this uh, Michael Pena's great in it and he's totally likable and you're with him the whole time. Rosa Salazar and then you guys threw in Michelle Krusek, and not a lot of people know her, but I absolutely love her. And that was a wonderful <laughs> surprise and a more to come, which we won't talk about today, but uh, yeah. just fantastic movie all around. I really enjoyed this. So congratulations. And I guess the first question is, uh, what brought this together? Yeah, so it, it came together. First of all, thank you for your comments. And and uh, Sydney Lamette, I mean, that's, you know, great company to be in. And honestly, that has to do with your director. I mean, I think that these stories can go in a very kind of traditional, you know, very melodramatic, very obvious way. And I think Alejandra Marquez Abella is is an amazing filmmaker. So um, a lot of this goes to to her. But it started, you know, before that with Jose walking into our office four years ago and, you know, uh, us identifying and falling in love with his story, knowing right away that it was a movie and could be a movie. And then, you know, you got to be on this this journey to try to, you know, have others agree with you and and put it together and, and and develop a great screenplay, get a get a great home like Amazon. And everything just worked out incredibly well. You know, Michael Pena was our first choice when we talked about it um, four years ago when he walked into our office. Uh, Jose also agreed. And once it was time to, to send a script out, you know, Michael loved it and became a great partner. And, you know, we saw a lot of different Adelas and um, and Rosa stood out. You know, we read so many different girls and uh, their chemistry was undeniable. So, you know, it's just a great process, you know, and um, it was a, it was a fun one and a hard one. We're going through a, a, spanning a lot of years of, of, of life for Jose. And again, I go back to, to Alejandra. She's a, she's a great filmmaker and um, you know, I'm, I'm, we're really excited for everyone to see this film now. Yeah. What, what, one of the, one of the great things about this, uh, uh, Rosa Salazar's character, Adela um, and any other movie and the, and forgive me, because this is what I initially thought when her character came in. Oh, she's going to be the she's going to be the overbearing wife who uh, blah, blah, blah. It was not that at all. She was extremely supportive. And there was like a lot of love within the within the family dynamic. And you got and then So when it got tough for them, when they got through the hard times and you saw them come together, it just it just made it that much more beautiful and emotional. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we uh <laughs> You know, I mean, we we just we made a really, really smart choice in bringing um, Alejandra on to direct this film. You know, to have that female perspective, you know, the movie almost becomes a two hander. I mean, it is a movie about Jose Hernandez, but at the same time, Adela's got a lot of agency um, and his, historically, meaning in the true story, um, you know, Jose will be the first to tell you that, uh, you know, it takes a village and, you know, right there by his side was was uh, Adela and the sacrifices that she made. And, um, you know, we just to see that that the script evolve, um, you know, you know, Alejandra went and sat down with Adela. She's like, I need to know Adela. I need to you know, I want to I want to tell her story, uh, you know, side by side with Jose's. And and it really shines through. It really shines through. And I Mark and I both, you know, obviously we we chose the perfect people to play these roles but that chemistry and then you know just the way that the the film came together you know i couldn't agree with you more uh, eric it's like they you just root for them so much you know when when she looks in his eyes and says you know you know i don't think that you know applying to nasa is a stupid dream and and it, and you see it in her eyes that she really believes in him because i don't know if he believes in himself at that point you know it's you know it's kind of a it's kind of an audacious dream, right? So to have a to have a partner in life that can give you that little inertia, that push to really, uh, you know, dive headfirst into achieving uh, is pretty incredible. Yeah, at, the, at that point, he was all he was definitely kind of like embarrassed to even say it out loud. And then when she gets, you know, 
She she like locks it in. It's like no, I believe it. That, yeah, that was a great scene. And then to see like all the all the fights that you know, it's like oh, it's not just about applying and uh, yeah. getting it back. You have to you have to work for it. How how much did you guys get to work with uh, Jose Hernandez in telling this story? And how much of this like because you know, this is not a documentary. This is a movie, so there, you yeah. got to hit certain beats. So like, what were some challenges bringing the real life story to uh, the movie that we ended up seeing? We, we we spent a lot of time talking with Jose. I mean, he was our source. It's his story. You know, there's he had his book, but you know, you, you also you know pull out stuff that's maybe not in the books, you know, just what, what were you feeling and, you know, what were your emotions? And, uh, you know, uh, there's a highlight reel of this film. And then there's the, the moments that are really quiet that, that are, I think, fantastic. I think the biggest challenge with this, with this movie was trying to span all the years, right? We start when he kind of graduates and, and, you know, uh, and then ends with him going up to space. It's close to 30 years, you know, 25 years. And, um, and he, uh, Pulling that off in a screenplay where you're not just like, okay, here's this year. We, we tried to kind of blend and blur and, you know, a progression of time that we didn't have to kind of put cards up of what year it was every single time. And so getting through that and actually having that as kind of some of the best scenes and montages of, of, of playing with time uh, was, I think, the biggest challenge and then some of the best work in the film. Yeah. Also, like early on, this kind of comes off as a low budget movie. I I have no idea what the budget was on this. But then, uh, spoiler alert: when he gets to space, the space scenes are really, really well done. So yeah. there there had to have been uh the, a lot of money put into special effects, or maybe it was a lot easier to put it together than well, I'm thinking. Or what, what was that it, process like? Yeah, it's interesting, Eric. We shot the whole film in Mexico. Um, a lot in Mexico City and then two other towns, uh, Queretaro and, and uh, San Luis Potosi. Um, Alejandra's from Mexico City, and she had brought this up early on because initially we we're going to shoot probably in two or three places in the U.S., you know, base somewhere, you know, for the Stockton scenes and maybe go to Houston. maybe, And that's really expensive to move production. So we ended up shooting and, and looking at Mexico as an alternative and uh, incredible crew down there. You know, we basically created everything from from the helo dunker to to the you know all of the the nasa you know internal the shuttle the simulator the you know and 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 we got that production value down there because none of that exists anymore so you'd have to even look to find where it is because it's a period piece it's from 2003 to 2009 once it gets to 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 nasa so that was a huge challenge and and you know we we just you know we talked to our production designer he's like no i'll make it you know we were going to bring in a shuttle from the u.s that exists and and drive it down he's like no i'm going to make it and we're like really and and it's it's incredible you know and nasa was a huge help too you know getting all their stock footage to look at and and some of it we put in the movie so that blending of it was just incredible and 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 you know just so authentic ultimately Um, and i and I would add, uh, you know, I think, you know, Jose, um, Alejandro wanted to juxtapose, you know, the intimacy of Jose's childhood with the scale and scope of his achievement, right? Um, so I remember early on, um, that was so important to her and to us. She's like, you know, when, you know, we're showing a migrant farm worker achieve this dream and it's got to feel big. It's got to feel big because it's such a big accomplishment. And I love that juxtaposition between sort of the agrarian, you know, the field, the, the migrant farm workers, the, uh, you know, the simple home that Jose grew up, grow up in. And you sort of see as, as his dream, as he gets closer to his dream, the, uh, the sort of the world in, increases. And, you know, she even had, you know, these color palettes of, you know, color palettes that kind of, if you, you know, watch the movie again, maybe you'll notice Eric, or maybe you'll recognize this, but it's, it's very earth tones, you know, even the uh, Mazda RX-7, you know, the real one wasn't that color, but Alejandro's like, I want it to be the color of the earth. And then, and then the blues of NASA, you know, then the movie sort of shifts in colors as, uh, as uh, we move from, uh, you know, Livermore to NASA. Mm-hmm. So, from yeah, Grand Sky, of- just as his uh, brother mentioned. Yeah, yeah exactly. So all, uh, all very, uh, intentional and uh, i i we don't have much time i could talk about this movie all day um 
<laughs> uh, so I, I don't get a chance. You guys are primarily producers and I don't get to talk to like, I talk to like writer producers and director producers on and so forth. But uh, for you guys producing movies, what goes into choosing movies and putting them together? And also uh, what are some movies uh, you produced in the past that like uh, you are really championing, but maybe didn't get, uh, you know, they didn't get enough eyes on it that you'd probably like to get more eyes on that we could point people to. Um, yeah, it's a good question. So um, with figuring out a movie, it's, it's you just have to have a gut instinct. You know, you have to fall in love with it yourself and then feel like, first of all, structurally, does it work? And, and can you get others as interested as you are? I mean, it has to start with your own passion. So that's something I think that just becomes a little bit of a shorthand in your gut and, and knowing, I mean, there's lots of great stories out there. Not all of them are cinematic or can be movies. Um, you know, worked on a lot of great, I think, films, um, you know, a movie like McFarlane USA, uh, similarities there. Uh, the original screenwriter on that movie was our first screenwriter on this film. So good connection there. But, uh, you know, we both, our first, Camel and mine first movie was Chappaquiddick, which I think was a oh. uh, fantastic movie that, uh, you know, people see it and they see it over time. But, uh, you know, you, you, you always want to continue to get eyes on a film. Um, we did a movie also called Safety. I think that, that you know, similar, you know, things of, you know, what you have to overcome, um, you know, the, the, the odds. You know, those are all films. I think pretty much all the films that we do, maybe aside from Chappaquiddick, are, you know, inspirational and, you know, against all odds and, and you know, uh, just just the furthest, furthest odds you can. And that's where we came up with the title of A Million Miles Away. It's, it's that, That's how far the stars are and that's how far his dream was. So, yeah. Yeah, I've been fortunate, um, Eric, to uh, to learn from a, you know, really talented, hands-on producer. You know, we've been collaborating now for seven or eight years and, you know, Mark's body of work before we started collaborating uh, was pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Everything from Miracle to uh, The Rookie, you know, all these great uh, Disney films, you know, that he that he made um, while uh, while a producer with the deal there. And then, um, you know, we we've been just, you know, we've been just talking over the last, you know, four or five years. Well, how, how do you take that that story and, and make it uh, a, a more of a global story and it's it's to move move these stories and you know away from the playing field and into uh you know different areas and this is one of the first films that um you know of, you know we have others uh that were that we're uh, excited about but this is the first one and um i gotta say you know being hands-on is the key i mean we uh we are involved we were on set every day we were in po we were in the editing room all the time we our, our our fingerprints are all over every element of this and that's because uh, we're creative producers and that's um uh, and we champion we we champion uh the projects we believe in and we we try to bring in uh the most you know the most talented people we can to collaborate with and with all hundred of our filmmakers exactly it's all about, for us it's all about uh, passing the baton to a, to a talented filmmaker who Who's, who listens and who's a collaborator and uh, and then you know the sky's the limit I mean our filmmaker just won the uh, best picture the Mexican version of best picture the Ariel for best picture for her last movie um two nights ago so we I guess we know how to pick them you know yeah well and and again I cannot stress this enough you guys got Michelle Krusek in there so more of that please well yeah, yeah I'm glad you like Michelle. Oh, I, yeah. I, I love her. I got to interview her uh, for, uh, she did a uh, bite size Halloween short, uh, Neon. And she said, uh, uh, I, I just love her. And to see her pop up in this, I was so excited. Yeah. Her, yeah. When she comes back at the end and, and you can see her in the reflection before she sits down, the whole audience just gasps. Yeah. And I, just, and, yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to say anything because I thought that'd be a spoiler, but since you brought it up, but, hey, I, I was bawling that. my eyes out when yeah. that happened. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'm glad we made you cry, Eric. Oh, you made me cry at least five times in this movie. <laughs> you know, this movie could have been, you're right, so melodramatic, and uh, but you know, in the right hands, it becomes something way more than that. You know, yeah. no, you know, it plays against stereotype. It doesn't, it doesn't put a wedge between you know immigrant and non-immigrant. Like it's just, uh, I we're so proud of this one. 
Yeah. But see, like, I, I think it is melodramatic, but like lo, what Sidney Lament says, that's not a bad thing. That's, that's a, that's a type of feeling you go for in a movie. Oh, and I, yeah. and I, and I think some people go for melodramatic and it becomes obvious and to where it doesn't work, yeah. but yeah. then you got movies or like that, this. I guess or, the word or, I'm for is or, or you mentioned, yeah. But you also mentioned miracle and that's another great example of a, a melodrama that just works. And yeah. Gavin did a great job, you know, in the right hands, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a great thing. Nobody better than Lamette though. I mean, it's, that's, oh, that's yeah. the best. It feeling organic and, and conversational and, you know, you feel like you're there rather than watching a very contrived scene. So. Yes. I, I mean, if it, if it's good enough for him, it should be good enough for the rest of us. I think. Exactly. <laughs> But uh, Campbell and Mark, uh, so this movie comes out on Prime Video on September 15th as we're recording this on the 11th. Uh, hopefully by the time anyone watching or listening to this uh, should be out now or uh, this Friday, go watch this, man. It, it, if you want to feel good about yourself, this is definitely a feel good movie. Performances are great. You guys knocked it out of the park and thank you for an awesome movie. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate Eric. it. Appreciate the love. Take care.